The Old Testament reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos chapter 5. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom, with no darkness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts. and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. While they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Forty-two days. That's how many days you have left before Christmas. How many of you are ready? I hope none of you, because it's not even Thanksgiving yet. But even if you're not ready, I'm sure some, if not most of you, have been busy making plans in your mind, writing some of this stuff down so that you will be prepared for, the, for that big family dinner, for decorating, for putting up the lights, for buying gifts, making travel plans, making, making plans for the services here at church, whatever it might be that's a family tradition for you. Or maybe this year you'll be starting a new family tradition so that when Christmas Eve and Christmas Day come, you're ready. But it's easy to get distracted in all of our preparations, isn't it? It's easy to put it off until the last minute, at least if you're like me. And then a few days before Christmas comes, you go into panic mode to get it all done. 
That's what's happening in Jesus' parable for us today. Jesus tells of ten virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom to show up. They knew that he was coming, but he was delayed. And as the day drew on, they got drowsy and slept. Then when the cry went out that the bridegroom had arrived, but the foolish virgins weren't ready. They didn't have enough oil. They knew what was coming, but they still weren't prepared. And so by the time they got back from buying some oil for their lamps, it was too late. The doors were shut, and the wedding banquet had begun. It's interesting to note that in Matthew's Gospel, in the original Greek, the word for foolish is moros. It's where we get the English word moron from. These five virgins were morons. They were foolish. They knew what was coming, that the bridegroom was on his way, but they failed to be prepared. You know that Jesus, the bridegroom of his, of his bride, the church, will one day return. But you say, Pastor, it's been almost 2,000 years since the ascension. How can we spend the rest of our lives waiting and anticipating his return when it's been this long already? We're like the virgins in the parable. We're like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. We have trouble staying awake, to stay alert, even though we know what's coming. So how do you stay ready for this long of a wait? By doing what you're doing right now. Being in God's holy house, hearing his word, receiving his sacraments. But like your preparations for the holidays that are coming, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to grow drowsy and sleep. It's easy to go about your daily life without giving any of it much thought. Because the old Adam within you tells you, don't worry about it. And then the devil and the world chime in and tell you even more emphatically that you don't need to go to church. You don't need to give your hard-earned money in the collection plate. You don't need to hear God's word. And so when we measure success in the eyes of the world, the church looks like the biggest loser there's ever been. Last week we heard of our brothers and sisters in Christ in Texas who were murdered in their house of worship. And what followed after those events? Christians were mocked, claiming that prayer doesn't work. That as these people knelt in prayer. Their prayers went unanswered and they were killed. And in that same way of thinking, nothing here that we do this morning matters. To the eyes of the world, it's just water that goes into the baptismal font and is poured over the head of the repentant. To the eyes of the world, it's just bread and wine that sits on the altar. To the eyes of the world, it's just a guy dressed in funny clothes who tells you that he forgives you all your sins. And so people are falling away from the church by the thousands and the millions. More and more today, people never even set foot within a church. And so in the eyes of the world, the church is an utter failure. And that you who sit here each week are the most foolish of the foolish for believing in a God. And so you buy into it. You begin to think in your minds, did God really say? I could be so much more productive if I wasn't here at church every week. I'd be so much more rested if I could sleep in on Sunday mornings. Do I really have to put some money in the collection plate 
even if it's only a couple of bucks. And then you go to the stores. You get online. And suddenly that $100 bill looks a lot smaller than it did on Sunday morning. Jesus tells you, watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Son of Man, Jesus, will return at a time when you and I don't know. And he calls you to be ready for it. So don't be a moron. Don't be foolish. Stay vigilant for his coming, lest it be too late and he say to you, I don't know you. Be prepared. Tell the old Adam within you, tell the devil and the world to be quiet, for God has spoken. And he says to you in Romans 1, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. While the world and even the church spins in an endless cycle of trendy spiritual half-truths, you are firmly anchored to the word of God. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And so you keep yourself disciplined. You continually remind yourself to be in God's word that you have been taught. And you teach that word to your children and to your grandchildren. And you show them by your own example the importance of being in worship each week that it isn't about tickling your funny bone or being entertained, but that it's about receiving the gifts that God has for you, that it's about the forgiveness of sins, that it's about Jesus who already comes to you now, not in judgment, but in mercy, with forgiveness for all your sins. For God himself is present. Let us now adore him, and with awe appear before him. God is in his temple. All, with kin, all within keep silence. Prostrate lie with deepest reverence. Him alone, God we own. Him, our God and Savior. Praise his name forever. He will sit upon the altar this morning, wrapping himself in bread and wine when the word is joined to it to be the very thing that he says that it is. And so you do know. You do know the day and the hour when Christ comes to you now already, but not yet knowing when he will come again in judgment. You are given the food from heaven, the very body and blood of Jesus. This food nourishes you in the faith so that you can stay awake, so that you would be prepared. For you need not rely on your own strength, but upon Jesus alone. So don't be a moron. Don't be foolish. Don't listen to the, your flesh, to the devil of the world, but listen to Jesus, who invites you to come to him, even now, as you wait and pray earnestly for his return. For he comes to you now, and by his suffering and death you are forgiven, so that when he returns in judgment you are ready. And that even in your day-to-day -day life, you leave this place each week with God's name and blessing upon you, set free from sin, set free from the devil, to love and serve each other, and to tell others of Jesus and his salvation, so that others, too, would be ready when he comes again in glory. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.